Well, she tried. At least, you know. Hi, everyone. It's Grayson, and this is Grayson Talks Everything. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you're not new and are returning, welcome back. Do be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And also follow me on Instagram to get the latest updates when videos of mine are coming out. And to always just like and admire some fan art of mine that I regularly post on there as well. Some of that should be showing up on the screen right now. All right, and the link to my Instagram is always in my description. But if you want to know my Instagram tag right now so you can follow me immediately, that should be showing up on the screen right now as well. All right, let's get into it. So today I'm going to be reviewing um, The Eternals with no spoilers, or yeah, with no spoilers. This is a non-spoiler review. Um, I really like this. Well, I like this movie. I enjoyed it. Um, I feel like this movie has a ma major problems, and I kind of disagree with a lot of people saying it's not like any other MCU movie. It really is, in my opinion. I think it just has like a better cinematographer. Um... Um, but yeah, let's just get into it because I have a lot to say about this film. Um, so yeah, let's just get into it. This is surprisingly the second time in a row, first with Venom, Let There Be Carnage, and now with Eternals, that a Marvel movie's in credit scenes hold just a little bit more weight than the main film itself. The end credit scenes in Eternals, as a matter of fact, does more to continue the story of the MCU than the main movie does. Eternals is so far removed from the MCU, both from how it feels, how it looks, and even the story itself, to the point where the movie feels like an unneeded detour from the main Marvel story, besides the end credit scenes. And while there are some good here, watching Eternals really made me realize I will not know peace until Kevin Feige finally like caves and just makes an X-Men movie. And while Chloe Zhao's directing was great, the movie itself was overwritten and has too many characters with not enough time to flesh them all out, especially the Deviants and the Celestials, who definitely got the short end of the stick. And the way the movie also depicts humanity as a whole and undercuts some of humanity's greatest achievements with how the Eternals were sewn into the actual human mythology in the film was also not as well done and executed poorly. And again, I feel like this movie tried to hide behind the fact that it's that it's seemingly a prestige um superhero film especially for an mcu movie to try to um hide the fact that it's not really well put together and i feel like this movie is trying to do so much with no real focus and i think that's what brings the movie down this movie sadly shows how this type of story, especially on the grand scale that the third act was, and how it literally was a world ending event, probably should have been a Disney Plus miniseries so we could have more time to meet the characters and just flesh out the story and our villains. Um, yeah, so like definitely like how um, the original comics were. The movie also had very low energy, and that is shown through the love triangle, or maybe a love square considering a certain fourth wheel character that I won't spoil, between Gemma Chan's Cersei, Richard Madden's Icarus, and Kit Harington's Dane Whitman, who is barely in the film, which is only presented in such broad strokes that it's stripped away of any raw emotion that would have made the storyline interesting. Like whenever the movie should have been at a 10 or an at 11, it always stayed at a somber 6. Now, on the more positive side, Kumail Nanjiani as Kinga was fantastic and the bolt of energy this film needed. Richard Madden as Icarus was also awesome to see on screen as he really is the MCU Superman equivalent. Lauren Ridloff's Makari is probably the best beatster we've seen on the big screen after Evan Peters' Quicksilver. Angelina Jolie as Cena was also very cool, and Brian Terry Henry's Fastos and the LGBTQ family unit he's a part of was a pleasure to watch on screen. The movie is also gorgeous to look at, with National Geographic levels of cinematography and VFX that is so hypnotic and beautiful. And while there are a few action scenes, they were all really well done and we got to see how their powers work in the real world, and they were all just awesome to look at and great. This movie's sort of like a screensaver, but with action scenes cut in the middle of them and with dialogue, which sounds like an insult, but the movie needs as much positivity as it gets right now, especially with that horrible Rotten Tomato score. And while this movie is very flawed, the visual style alone is worth seeing this film in theaters. 
So there you have it. That is my non-spoiler review of Eternals. So what did you think? Share all your thoughts down below in the comments section. And don't forget, and don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And also follow my Instagram so you never miss the latest updates and when videos of mine are coming out. And again, to just admire and like some fan art of mine that I regularly post on there as well. All right. Bye, everyone.